by rays. I fold. Fold. Oh, I called. He called. He called me with nine high. I have ten high. What? He spiked a five. Are you kidding me? Three, eight. Wow, I'm out. He outflopped me. Whatever. Oh, hey, sorry about that. I was uh, busy playing an online game of poker, and I lost with ten high, but the other guy called me with nine high. Are you serious, bro? Hey everybody, welcome once again to No DQ and a video right here on NoDQ.com and the YouTube channel as always. This is episode number 351 now. Here's to another 350 episodes. If you haven't already, subscribe, tell a friend on Facebook or Twitter. With that being said, let's get right down to your questions from Formspring, or should I say spring.me slash Aaron Rift. First one today comes from the peculiar one. Hey Aaron, do you see Daniel Bryan winning the WWE title back from Randy Orton at Night of Champions? Please answer in video. Well, I would certainly hope so, considering how WWE has been booking the storyline between Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton in recent weeks. And I have another question here from CM Punk Rock. Hey Aaron, I've been getting very tired of the beatdown endings of the past few Raws and Smackdowns. I know creative are trying to book Brian as the ultimate underdog, but I think it's been very lazy, unimaginative, and something we've seen before. Your thoughts? I had discussed this several weeks ago. As some of you may know, I was at the Monday Night Raw in Anaheim the night after SummerSlam, and I wasn't a really big fan of the show. Something about the storyline where Daniel Bryan was getting his ass kicked that night, the night after SummerSlam, when it ended with Daniel Bryan being laid out, I didn't really care for it. I thought that he needed to look stronger. And um, I even mentioned on Twitter that it, it looks like Daniel Bryan is going to be booked as the ultimate underdog. And um, a lot of people got on my case about it. As, as a matter of fact, there were some people on Twitter calling me an, an idiot for criticizing the show. Um, but now, a few weeks later, a lot of people are starting to come down on this whole storyline with Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton. And I, I figured that this was how it was going to go, where Daniel Bryan would be the new Mick Foley. You know, it's like the corporation angle all over again uh, with Daniel Bryan in the Mick Foley role. Um, I'm thinking that Brian will win the title back, and that's inevitable. I don't know if it's going to happen at Night of Champions because I see this feud between Brian and Orton dragging out at least until the Hell in the Cell pay per view. So if you're going to have three matches, are you going to have Brian win the first match and then have Orton win the second match? Or how, how do you do this? Um, one thing I could see happening is a screw job finish at Night of Champions and then at Battleground. You can have Daniel Bryan beat him, Orton gets his rematch at Hell in the Cell, and Bryan beats him again. I think that that might be the best way to go. I'm not really a fan of doing a screw job finish at Night of Champions, but if you're going to do a three-match series, I mean, that seems to be the most logical way to go. But regardless of what happens, I, I, I think you really need to have Daniel Bryan win the title now. Otherwise, what was the point of just burying him every week only for him to not win the title? So, you know, I, I think a lot of fans will feel redeemed if and when Brian wins the title. And, um, you know, as much as people have been complaining, I think that they'll be happy if and when the time comes that he gets the belt. So hopefully um, he does get it. And hopefully the storyline doesn't ruin him. And, you know, I don't think it will. I think the fans are still going to be behind Daniel Bryan. And um, I, I, I think it'll work out okay even if they keep booking him where he keeps getting beat up right until the pay-per-view. All right, this one comes from Steve Copeland 3. Hey Aaron, this is my first time asking a question and longtime viewer. Who would you like to see Undertaker face at WrestleMania 30? And I'm loving the McMahon family storyline being a guy that's my childhood years was watching the original storyline. All right, I think he was just trying to make a comment here that he's loving the McMahon storyline. And uh, like I said in a previous question, it is like a new version of the corporation with um, 
Triple H as the Vince McMahon and Randy Orton as The Rock. Um, and you know what? Uh, before I get to the question here about Undertaker, um, you know, a lot of people complain about the, the storylines being recycled. And I mean, that's going to happen. Storylines are eventually going to be repeated after so many years. There's only so many storylines you can do. And, um, you know, things are going to be repeated after a while. So I don't. I don't think it's a huge deal that they're doing something that they did 12, 13 years ago. Now, if they started repeating a storyline that they did two years ago, like with CM Punk dropping a pipe bomb, I mean, you know, I, I was fine with AJ's thing, but you know what? I'm rambling now. I'm getting, um, you know, away from the question here. So let's let's get to the question here about Undertaker, WrestleMania 30. Um, I think ideally for WrestleMania 30, you have Undertaker in there with one of two people either Brock Lesnar or John Cena. Undertaker and John Cena is quite possibly the biggest match WWE could do that they haven't done yet at WrestleMania. Um, and, you know, Lesnar and Undertaker would, would definitely be a close second. And I think in all likelihood, it will be Undertaker and Lesnar, um, especially considering the fact that Lesnar got the big win over CM Punk. And, you know, CM Punk's the number two, number three guy in the company. And... Um, WWE is not going to have a part-timer beat CM Punk unless there's a good reason for it. And if they want to build up Brock Lesnar for The Undertaker, that would be the perfect reason. You know, have Brock Lesnar come in, challenge The Undertaker, the guy that beat CM Punk at SummerSlam, makes perfect sense. So right now I'm thinking they're going with Undertaker and Lesnar. And um, if they don't do that, then hopefully they do Undertaker and Cena. They should still try to do Undertaker and Cena. Um, perhaps WrestleMania 31 before it's too late because that's still a huge match that they can do. And if they don't do that, just a, a major missed opportunity in my opinion. All right, this one comes from Ty Burns. What did you? What What do you think was a better Undertaker streak match? Undertaker versus CM Punk or Undertaker versus Batista? Man, that is a really tough one. I mean, for me, they were very neck and neck. I don't even know if I could choose one or the other. They're not in my top tier of Undertaker matches. The top tier matches would be the matches with Shawn Michaels and uh, the matches with Triple H, at least the first two matches. Um, but they would definitely be right after that. Um, honestly, I mean, I really liked the Undertaker-Randy Orton match from uh, WrestleMania 21, not just because I was there, but I, I just thought that that match... Uh, was really intense, really dramatic, and uh, everyone in the crowd bought into the idea that Randy Orton could end the streak. And, you know, the same thing for Batista. The problem with Punk is I don't really feel enough people bought into Punk being a guy that could end the streak. And, and you know, I feel at this, 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 this stage of the game, WWE needs to put Undertaker in there with the very top-tier guys. And, you know, CM Punk is one of the top guys, but I don't know. Something about that match, you know, you just didn't buy into the idea that Punk could beat him. So... Maybe I would give the slight edge to Undertaker and Batista, but very, very slight. I mean, those two matches were, were very equal, in my opinion. All right, this one comes from Whitson774. Do you hate being asked constantly about Chris Benoit? I feel there's a question at least once every 20 episodes. You must be getting a lot more. Personally, I feel regardless of what he did in the ring, what he did to his wife and child is too big to forget. Well, yeah, I mean... Here's the thing about Chris Benoit, the guy had some serious brain damage, so you can't really hate the guy for what he did. I mean, he did a really terrible thing, but the guy's head was clearly not in the right place, and um, you know he had the brain, they said, of a 90-year-old a Alzheimer's patient, so I mean, it was very severe brain damage that he had, so it, it's really hard to be mad at the guy for what happened, um, but... It is what it is. He killed his wife. He killed his son. And, um, you know, I do not blame WWE as a publicly traded company um, for, for taking the course that they take where they, they don't mention him unless it's absolutely necessary. And, um, you know, I, I feel that, um, you know, they need to do what they need to do as a business. All right. This last one today comes from King X 21 Answer in video. Where do you see the Big Show and Triple H feud going? Personally, I would like WWE to do a Survivor Series match with Team Big Show versus Team Triple H. 
I think I talked about this a little bit in the previous video with um, a possible Survivor Series match um, revolving around this current storyline. I could very well see that happening, and I actually think that this is more of a possibility than, say, a Team Daniel Bryan versus Team Randy Orton match, because I think that whatever the title match is at Survivor Series, um, you know, those guys will be involved in that. And maybe not Bryan and Orton, since I, I think that feud will be over by then. But uh, whatever, the there'll be the title match, and then you'll have the other guys. And, you know, Big Show's most likely not going to be in the title picture. So, um, you know, this this sounds like something that, that could very much be a possibility. And, um, you know, I, I think they, they might as well do something like this. Definitely, um, you know, if this storyline's going to be going until WrestleMania, then certainly you should have some sort of high-profile match at Survivor Series. Um, and, you know, that would be a good way to have Triple H involved. And at some point, I think we're going to see a big show Triple H singles match. But, you know, a, a team versus team match would be perfect for Survivor Series. So definitely would like to see that. And um, I think there's a good possibility we will see something maybe not exactly team show versus team Triple H, but something similar. All right, that'll wrap things up for this edition of No dq &A Video. Thank you guys so much for all, all the support for the past 351 videos now. Keep it going. Keep spreading the word on Facebook and Twitter. And um, stay tuned to NoDQ.com. We're now close to one week away from WWE United Champions. Follow NoDQ for all the very latest regarding the pay-per-view. And I will see you guys next time for more No dq &A Video.